Hello and welcome to another Talk About Games. I'm Ryan. And I am Mike. And today we're talking about Infernax and Bart versus the Space Mutants. Oh boy. Uh, what do you want to start with, Ryan? Um, Actually, I, I know Infernax just came out. Yes. And everybody w- wants to hear about that. Yes. So let's talk about Bart versus let's, the Space Mutants. Let's talk mutants. about Bart. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Bart versus the Space Mutants. It's kind of like, why the fuck would I come back to that right right because like people look at it as like a crappy game and it is it is a pretty crappy well, game hold on. yeah it's, it's an nes game mm-hmm. it's a simpsons game it's a simpsons game from the time when the simpsons were like a pop culture phenomenon where they were having like congressional meetings about oh my god this is gonna corrupt the children i i remember well i remember going to school and I had a Bart Simpson shirt on. It was a white shirt, and it said, "I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you?" Right. And the teacher made me like turn it inside out, yeah, because like you know because it was inappropriate, you know, right. at the time, which is like no big deal now. But in 1988 or whatever, it was like big, a big deal. You can't say that in school. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Simpsons were. That's when the Simpsons were first starting. It was popular. There was lots of Simpsons games, and um, you might be like, "Oh, well, what Simpsons games?" are even good and people will be like oh the arcade game is the yes. good one and it it is for the most part probably one of the best ones i just think like like any beat em up not just singling out that i feel like the arcade game gets a little redundant right um but it's a great game i love that uh bongo and binky from life and hell make appearances in the arcade game the rabbits yeah the arcade game is definitely like like a a love letter to mm-hmm. like early simpsons and early Matt Groening stuff. Yeah. Um, you own the arcade machine. I do. I own the arcade machine. And actually, I never really even asked you, so I, I'm sure you had to have played through the whole thing when you got that. Right. Right? Like, how is that experience? Um, it's, it's actually pretty surreal because when you're a kid, you only get so many quarters, right? Mm-hmm. So, like... You know, I got to the end of like what my dollar twenty five or dollar fifty or whatever my mom gave me right. was, and I'm like, oh, there's a whole, there's more to this, right? There was a movie theater near me when I was growing up, and I, as I said before, I was a spoiled kid. Right. I actually beat that game in the arcade when I was like ten or something. What is I, it? I what? went with a giant thing of quarters yeah. or whatever it was. I had a machine. And I sat and I fucking played it and played it and played it and popped in quarters. I probably spent a lot of money doing yeah. it. Um, and there, back then, there was only a couple of games that I actually beat. When I was in Disney World as a little kid, I beat Double Dragon. Oh, that's cool. I think they had it on free play in Disney World. Yeah. I, I, I think it was in our hotel, whatever it was. Yeah. Caribbean Beach or something, you know, they had like, or I don't remember what hotel it was. But, um, but back then, to beat an arcade game, it was like... I think twice in my life. I think those those are the only two games, uh, arcade games right. I beat. Did you have any arcade games you beat back then? Any arcade games I beat? I was able to play through Street Fighter Two, like the Champion Edition. It, right. I was able to beat all the fighters. Yeah. In that. Um, but you were doing it. See, that's the way you're supposed to. do You probably doing it because you got good at it. Yeah. Where I was just popping in quarters like an asshole. Right. Well, you in know, both of the games. That that being said, when you start getting to the end of Simpsons, like you just die. Oh, it's dead. Death, You're just death, like, death, it's death. like, it's yeah. like, give me money. It's really bad. Me, it's like yeah. made to make money. With like Mr. Burns and all that. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. So, um, yeah, actually, I we just bought for the convention, we just bought an X-Men. And it's actually kind of funny. So this X-Men has been sitting in South Philly in a bodega since like it came out yeah oh so it was sitting just sitting in the store and it's a uh, four player or the four six player. player yeah four, four player. player just like the simpsons um and it had been sitting in there and it didn't move the whole time and they had it uh tnt amusements todd tucky maintained it uh, okay so it was actually like it was okay in yeah. good shape yeah and we're gonna have that so now i have two of the konami beat-em-ups 
you you know what I never see anywhere because uh, you know I'll go to those barcades and I'll go to um, I've been to Fun Spot and I've been to um, other arcades Cowboys around. Cowboys and Mesa. Turtles in Time. Oh yeah, I never see it. Wow. Anymore. Get yeah. a Turtles in Time rather not, than regular Turtles. Not regular Turtles. Get Turtles in Time because you never fucking see it. Right. You never see it anywhere. Yeah. You know, for the longest time, I didn't even know that. I thought it was just the Super Nintendo one. I didn't oh. even know that there was the arcade because I hadn't seen it. So I, I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. So back in the 90s, I used to go to the Seaside Boardwalk. You guys know like Jersey Shore and shit like that. So I'd go to the board, the boardwalk and they'd have um, different places that ha- would have arcade machines. And some of them were like destroyed in a storm, like the really old right. ones. But one of the other places had uh, the Turtles in Time. And I didn't, in the 90s, like I didn't know it was like going to be a thing or whatever. So I'm walking down the boardwalk and I turn over and I look. And I didn't know the thing existed. I remember that moment and like my heart, I remember my heart like dropping. I looked over and it was Turtles in Time that I didn't know existed. Wow. And the machine is staring me in the face and I'm like, and the music is going like the, yeah. you know, the pizza, pizza power, yeah. and that whole thing, which that, that song is really fucking funny because I looked up the, li- the lyrics to that song and, um, if you look, if you read the lyrics of that song, it's like, uh, and the Super Nintendo game doesn't have that song. It's only the arcade version that has it. Right. And it's all about the kid has the the glass bowl with the turtles. And the turtles are in the glass bowl and they're just turtles and they're living their life. And then it some, says something about uh, uh, this, this UFO comes or they think it's a UFO, this UFO of pizza. But what it's supposed to be, I think, is the, is the kid with a piece of pizza putting it into the, into the bowl. Oh, and yeah. then they're like, oh, my God. Whatever. It, the, the, basically, the lyrics are just like really funny. And yeah. it's like I feel like the person who wrote the song probably didn't know much about Ninja Turtles. Right. You know, they just came <laughs> up with this goofy song. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm getting really off topic here. Uh, this is about Bart versus Space Mutants. Right. Um, we just start talking about uh, Ar- arcade games and shit. <laughs> but um, so Bart versus Space Mutants, it's just, it was another. So you had these cool Ninja, uh, N- uh, Ninja Turtle games. You had these cool Simpsons games, uh, like in the arcade, the, the arcade game. And later on, you had like Road Rage and stuff like that. Right. But back in the like Super Nintendo NES era, you had like you had like Bart's Nightmare, which I played through and I got an A plus in that game. So I did the best you could do in that game, and that game I think is terrible. Other than it's really? got nice as graphics. a kid, I was amazed by the like, the nuclear graphics, like where you're flying. The graphics are great. Yeah, they're great. So there is a good aspect to that game, but the game it sucks. Right. Like whatever. That's that'd be a whole so, nother video. So let's let's talk about. Bar vs. the Space Mutants, and the only thing I remember about it is that first stage with the paint, because yeah. I couldn't get past So it. most people only, so they they get on, well, actually, most people you met, might beat the first stage, and then they get, to the, you, they get to the second stage, and they get to the mall, and that's usually where people give up, but I'll get to that. So it starts off, the game, you're in Springfield, and there was a movie called They Live, Yes, and in that movie... Uh, I, I think it's Rowdy Roddy Piper. If Tony were here, he'd probably have something good to say about it, but I'm not like a movie guy. And in the movie, the guy puts on glasses and he can see aliens with these right. special glasses and then you take them off and then it's like real people and you put them back on. I think that's where that came from. Right. So in the game, you're doing the same thing. You put on the glasses and then you can see aliens and then you bop them on the head and stuff like that. So that that's one part of it because the aliens have taken over Springfield is the idea mm-hmm. of the game. And level one, you're just in Springfield and these aliens keep coming up with different plots for each level. Okay, on this level, everything that's purple um they're making like these weird machines i don't i don't even know so you gotta like get rid of everything that's purple yeah so anything you see that's purple you gotta spray paint it red or you have to maybe cover it up so you can't see it like there's part where you go over like a wire and you drop like towels down on stuff just anything you can do to get rid of the color purple um so it's a weird idea and it's another one of these things where, like, back then in the NES era, there you had all these games with weird concepts and ideas. And I like that about that era, that it wasn't just, like, this formulaic, like, oh, we're going to make a platformer. And, you know, oh, we're going to make a beat-em-up. It, it was like they were coming up with all kinds of weird ideas, and some worked better than others. 
this is probably an example of something that didn't work as well because I think it confused people. I mean, my biggest problem with it, like, I actually like the way that first stage looks and I like the concept of it. What I don't like about it is it's just really punishing and unforgiving. It if is. If you miss one bottle rocket, you miss one, like, with the towel, yeah. you miss any of that. It's hard, yeah. What are you going to do? There's, like... You pretty much have to get almost everything. You can, you can be over. There's like maybe like a leeway of like one or two things, but it's not much. What they probably could have done to fix it was give you a bunch of additional things, so right. that so that by the end it's like if you missed ten things, you'd still be good. But they make it so that like you can only really miss like maybe one thing or two before making it to the end. So you have to like you have to do that. So that's what the stage is like. And I think people play that and they're confused by it because you play games like Castlevania and you're just like hitting enemies. You play Mario and you're just running to the end of the stage. It's very like – it's sort of a puzzle and you got to figure it out. And I don't think people like that, especially right. people who are used to like the Simpsons arcade game. It's like, oh, you just beat up. You just ma ba you know, mash buttons. It's not like that. You have to think. And people don't like to think, you know? Right. And, and like maybe you have to like read the manual and be invested in it and right. get it because – yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so let's say that you – so that's the first stage and you got to do all these different crazy things like you go into a shop and you get like a a wrench and then you'd be like, okay, I have a wrench. What do I do with the wrench now? It's like you know, how do you even know? And you got to figure all these things out so that you know the, oh, the wrench. You got to take it to the – fire hydrant and the fire hydrant shoots water at a thing and the water washes the paint off. So – so right. it's not purple anymore, what and it's all these different things. What I don't understand is, you know, it took them so much effort to program all these unique interactions, mm -hmm. right? It's all unique. It's it's unique code, right? But then you get to, like, the next stage. Yeah, I'm going to get into that, right? And, like, they, I feel like they kind of, like, spent the money on the first stage. Yeah. Right? It, it's kind of weird because it's, like... I could almost imagine another world where people look at this and they're like, oh, what a cool game where you have to do all this stuff. Like, what not that a creative, like, you know, because I feel like I, I feel that way with, like, other games. It's like pe people try to, like, justify some of these games. It's like, oh, right. what, what unique mechanics. But The Simpsons seems to be one where everybody just kind of hates it. Um, but yeah, you get to the second stage and the second stage has none of those puzzle solving aspects at all. There's nothing to solve on the second stage. Right. Um, maybe if they would have flipped it, if they would have made the mall first and that stage second, maybe people would have liked the game a little more because maybe you could have learned the mechanics a little more. I don't know. But, um, so the second stage is the mall and the mall, there's nothing to solve. You just go through the mall and the mall is all just like jokes. Like there is a pair of shoes that go along the ground and they're like, uh, they're doing the moonwalk and you're like, oh, Michael Jackson. Right. And then you see like stores in the background and one says the bi the really big shoe, which is a reference to um, uh, at the Ed Sullivan show. And once again, we got to go back in time here because the develop. It's like when we did the Three Stooges. It's like the developers were older, so right. like you that those were jokes they put in for themselves. But like now, it's like nobody's gonna get that now. So the developers were our age now, or maybe even then. older. Yeah, yeah. They're probably in their fifties then. Right. So they remember that shit. Yeah. Right. So and then you played now in 2020, and people are like, "I'm like, I'm like, so listen, everybody, uh, this is an Ed Sullivan reference," and they're like, "Who the Who's fuck Ed? is Ed Sullivan, right?" <laughs> exactly. And I'm, I'm like, you know, Stephen Colbert, and they're like, "Yeah," I'm like, "Well, before that, it was David Letterman, and before that, in that theater was Ed Sullivan, and it was that's why they call it the Ed Sullivan Theater." And they're like, "Oh, okay, I guess." <laughs> yeah. But like, that's El Elvis played there, the Beatles played there. Right. It was like a big deal, but nobody fucking remembers. And Ed Sullivan would come out, and he'd say. Are you all ready for the really big shoe? It was the 1950s, like the big show. That was like his phrase. It's right. like how – so people know Ed Sullivan saying the really big shoe the same way people know me as, oh, brown bricks. So Ed Sullivan did shows for like 30 years. Right. And like with the Beatles and all the – like all the yeah. stuff, shows and shows and shows. And the only thing people are going to remember is, oh, the really big shoe. Right, they're like, right. Hey, oh, you're the – freaking shoe you're guy the, you're the fucking shoe asshole right like, as if that's all he did right yeah, right <laughs> um so because because humanity is like awful <laughs> yeah so anyway uh so bart versus space mutant so you're on the you're, you're on the second level 
and you're it's the fucking mall and so here's where people most people give up so the, if if you make it through the first stage most people don't make it past this part so this yeah. part where there's on the ground it's um cement yeah like um that's not that like wet cement so you got to make it over it so in the sky there is floating lollipops yes. and they're spinning mm -hmm. and the way okay so the way the controls are the controls are bad so like yes I don't even know how to, it's this weird sort of like A-B thing you have to do. I don't even know how to explain like it. roll your. Like roll your thumb yeah. to be able to make these jumps. So you got to kind of run and then jump, but it's not like Mario. It's its its own weird thing and it, it is really bad. But because I used to play this game a lot as a kid, I got used to it. So I got pretty good at it. So I was ne I never had a hard time with that part. But usually what happens is people try to make those jumps and you try to land on these lollipops. And if the lollipop isn't horizontal, and you try to land, if the lollipop's vertical, you go through it and you're gonna hit, you're gonna die. So the lollipop has to be horizontal, to, like a platform to right. land on it. And basically, so you have to have good timing with a run and jump that's hard to do. So people give up there because the platforming and is it's tough. it's double timing because it's the timing of when you jump to make the jump, but then that comes with landing, the, landing it at on the, the lollipop right at the right time. It's tough, yeah. it's, it is tough to do. Um, so anyway, so you get past that, and then uh, on that stage, basically, you'll see, like, I think it's supposed to be, like, Principal Skinner. You fight him. He's almost like a mini boss on each level. You keep going up the escalators, and you're collecting hats. And, oh, I didn't even, like, talk about this. So the other Simpson characters are, are like, in it, like mm -hmm. Marge and Homer and all them. And what you got to do is, let's say it's the mall level. You collect you and oh the the aliens come by you, or pe people walk by and then you put on the glasses to see if they're aliens or not. And if you put on the glasses and you see the tentacles coming out of the head, you jump on their head. They explode and they drop a little thing. You grab it and it's like a letter and it goes and then you might spell out Marge. And if you get enough of them and you spell out the name, when you get to the boss at the end of the level, and the sec the boss of the mall is the babysitter from one of the early episodes where okay. they have this shitty babysitter that babysits them and like they're like this nasty yeah. you know person anyway I think that's babysitters only in one episode but they made that a boss and uh, you get to the end and if you spell that Marge she'll help you so the babysitter is like dropping like luggage on you and I think okay. luggage is part of that episode somehow so she's dropping luggage on you so you gotta jump on the luggage which pops back up at the babysitter and you keep hitting her but she's throwing them down at you quick so but so if you have Marge Marge is throwing this shit to make it so she doesn't drop the stuff as quick so all the other Simpson family will help you making the boss fights like a little bit easier. Do you feel like you need to have no. The help? No. 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 Sometimes it's actually more distracting. On the next stage when you get Lisa, she comes by in like a hot air balloon and it's actually kind of more annoying because there's like, it's more, because it's not a hard boss fight. The third one is uh, Sideshow Mel, or Sideshow Bob. It's Sideshow Bob and you, all you gotta do is jump on his feet. But if Lisa's there, she's like doing, she's like dropping things on his head and it's like more stuff going on. It's like, you don't need it. It's kind of just annoying. So yeah. anyway, the third, so the third level is the Krusty's fun house level. And this one, I kind of liked this level as a kid because it, it was a bunch of mini games and you, there's like different like carnival games you can play. Like you go up to like a spinning wheel and a uh, throwing darts at a board and all this different stuff and you take the coins and you give it to it and you can play all these little mini games and I thought that that, that part of it was at least a, like a fun little idea but uh, you get to this one part where it's like doors mm -hmm. and it's even scratchy on the, on the screen and I never figured it out it's just like these random doors and you click the door and then like a bunch of I don't even know how to explain it but like basically like different doors appear and then you try to randomly pick the doors until all the doors are closed, I guess. So you just randomly do it. I never until... fucking figured it out. I don't know how yeah. you do that. But fortunately, there's a timer on it. And when it runs out, you don't have to do it. Okay. Anyway, that, that part sucks. Um, It's like there's there's so much to like 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 unpack with this game and like talk about. It's almost like every – it's almost like I feel like – I don't want this to be like a walkthrough where I'm like right. talking about every single little aspect I, of it. But I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. Has we, did Acclaim ever make a good video game? I'd have to look at the list. Right? Yeah. Like I'm just, I'm just curious. Yeah. Because – like you constantly see acclaim games and you know, we're known for saying LJN, they make yeah. crappy games, but 
Acclaim is right up there with the uh, licensed titles. Mm. They published Double Dragon. I'm, I like Double Dragon. Yeah, that's pretty good. Narc. Did yeah. they develop it, though? No. They're just publishing. So, so, no, these are published. Okay. Yeah, actually, of those... Were they even a developer? I don't even know. I don't think so. Well, from 87 to 90, they weren't, so... Well, whatever. If they released it, we can still say it, like they were involved, right. so... They got Quirk. So, okay, so they had they did Smash TV, which I like okay. that. You like that. Double Dragon 2, I like that. I like that, too. Uh, Krusty's Funhouse, I think, is shit. Um, yeah. And Acclaim, Acclaim did Bigfoot on NES, which is one of the worst fucking games on the nes they, oh they did back to the future two and three right so they have a mixture of like some good games and bad games basically right i mean they published so you're talking about like like the heyday it seems like the heyday of acclaim is nba jam mortal Kombat. a little bit later like after the NES you know that stuff. type yeah, of stuff right. yeah it's 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 really weird but but man they 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 made a ton of uh Simpsons games, but I have to, I have to talk about the other couple levels because sure, because that gets it. me into my main stuff with this game. So you got it. So when I was a kid, uh, I wasn't the kid who gave up or who couldn't get past the mall. I was able to do that. Mike was good at games. Everybody. Oh my god, I'm not saying it because of that. <laughs> I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm saying it because I get to, yeah. what I'm, the problem I would have is when I would get to the museum. Okay. So I'd get through the crusty stuff, and then the fourth level is the museum. And I, and as a kid, I couldn't make it past the museum shit. Yeah. So um, I just played it the other day because I wanted to like replay it before I, we did this. And I'm glad that I did that because I remembered all the things of my fucking problems with it. It's all on this museum stage. So the museum, uh, you have to collect exit signs, and you, you only have to get like a couple exit signs. It's like different than the other stages where you have to get like thirty hats, or you got to get all these fucking. You got to get everything to be purple or whatever. I hate the inconsistencies. This is like everything you're talking about in this game. It's like who knows what the next stage is. It's gonna all have to over do. the place. Yeah. Which in a way, it's like that's what people applaud Battle Toads for. Right? They're like, oh, on this stage. You um you're going you're, you're you're going down and you're hanging on a rope and then on the next stage it's like all ice and shit and you're sliding around and then there's on the next stage there's snakes everywhere so people applaud battle toads for for how much variety there is this game has a lot of variety but people hate it right right so it's like when is it it's okay all when about is it not execution. it's all about execution it's true um so in this museum um oh my god there's like there's like all this shit you got to do. You, you like you go through like this jungle area, and then like you go through this area that's a bunch of like laser beams and shit. But as you get through the museum, you get to a part that's like dinosaurs and like a tar pit. And this is the hardest part of the game, definitely. Is there's this tar pit, and there's dinosaur bones in the tar pit, and you're trying to jump on from dinosaur bone to dinosaur bone. But what happens is these golden geese come, and the the geese come. And you have to like jump over them, okay, and land on um, these moving dinosaur heads that are going back and forth in the in the water. And the way that ha they have the timing when the birds come out to where you ha where you have to jump is like very very fucking difficult to do. And I think that that is the hardest part of the game. And then there's a mini boss that comes up, or uh, actually right before that, there's this part that comes comes up where in the background, you'll see this like floating mm, rock in the in the in the water. I I love when you're describing this. You have to like you have to like think about what it is. It's yeah. like there's a <laughs> rock. Yeah, over there. Right. Maybe. Well, it's NES graphics, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're like so. There's like this river, and it's coming right. towards you, right. and you have to make it over the river. So yeah. you got to wait, and then this rock comes. Meanwhile, while that's going on, like little rocks are coming down that you got like yeah. back and forth to avoid. And this rock comes and you have to wait until the rock almost gets to the foreground. When it gets to the foreground, it leaves the screen, like on the bottom of the screen right. as if it's like, because the rock's getting bigger. So right before the rock leaves the screen, you got to make this jump where you hit the rock and then jump off of it immediately to get over this thing. It's yeah. very hard to do that. That's one of the hardest parts of the game, followed up by the thing I just talked about with the ducks and shit. Yeah, yeah. So there's those two things, which are very difficult. And then after that, there's the mid-boss, which is this dinosaur. 
And this fucking dinosaur uh, is horrible because it's spitting these things out of its mouth and they're really like tough to avoid because the, they seem like almost like they're they're not heat seeking you, but they're like landing always where you are. So you're trying to right. move out of the way, but the it's it's hard to fucking get out of the way of these things that it's spitting. So then what happens is this is an NES screen, right? Think, imagine mm-hmm. the screen, and the dinosaur head is in the top right of the screen. Okay. So you have to get on top of the dinosaur's head, but in front of the dinosaur is like it's just like a flat ground. And you have to kind of know to jump up, like, on this flat ground. Like, it doesn't – like, the way the graphics are doesn't make sense. What it should be is there should be, like, three platforms. Well, I mean, that's one of my problems with the first level of the game. Yeah. You, know, you can, like, go up on some buildings, but other ones you can't. And you're always, like, jumping weird places. Yeah. And it's all This part's really bad, though, because, like, you, you would not know that there's things that you could even jump on. But there is. So you jump on basically these things in the background that don't look like platforms. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the top platform. And then you got to jump from the top platform and land on the top of the dinosaur's head. And I kept falling through the dinosaur's head and dying. Okay. And I was getting really fucking pissed off because – so there's the dinosaur and he's got his eye, his eyeball. Mm -hmm. And right behind his eyeball is like this little square on the top of his head. And you have to know – like you have to know. That you have to land on that square because if you're before that square where the eye is, you're going to fall through and die. If you f- go jump after it, you're going to die. So this is this little window that you have to jump on to bop them on the top of the head. And then when you do that, that's not enough. Then you got to jump back to that top platform that's before that you don't even know is a platform because there is no fucking platform. It's basically nothing. You're dro- jumping on a spot that's nothing. So you jump back and then you bop him on the head again and then you gotta do it again. And you do it three times and you finally kill this thing and it's just really fucking bad right. because there's this, this basically this invisible platform that you're on and then there's this little teeny spot on the top of his head that you have to know exists and you're mm-hmm. doing this and it's just like this fucking sucks. There's a way to design like I could design that way better i see what they were trying to do but it's it's right. shit design that's where i like really have a problem with the game like when you get to that part i'm just like this is fucking badly designed um at the end of the stage um you fight dr marvin monroe which is an early episode of the simpsons i think it's episode like four and that's when the simpsons go um to get like uh you know a psychiatrist cuz they're having family problems right. or whatever it's and it's funny cuz all these bosses are all like early yeah episodes you know um lastly i'm going to talk about the last level which is the power plant okay and then we'll be done so the power plant uh the idea of this stage there's a completely different idea by, believe it or not by the way yeah. This what you're doing now, yeah, is setting up what I'm going to talk about. Okay, perfectly. Okay, I'm um, very excited. Okay, so the power plant um, is, and you're talking about Infernax, right? Yes, I okay. am. So uh, it's a totally different idea than the whole rest of the game. Okay, so then the is, power this plant. is the last level. Do you know anything about the power plant? Okay, okay, I've never beat the first stage of this game. Okay, I I went over your house and we did a live stream and I sat there and watched you do the first level of Bart versus Space Mutant no problem and I'm sitting there looking at it like you solved some cryptic puzzle like you were in a cave in Egypt and you just found the fucking Rosetta Stone because I could never get past that first stage as a kid and you're like dropping towels on things and balls are going and rockets are going and I'm like holy shit well I feel that way about things that you do all the time (laughs) that make more sense like you you've made apps and you've made video games and you've you're learning another language so I'm doing these things in video games that mean fucking nothing really other than maybe to me. Right. And, um, and maybe a couple of the people that watch my streams and whatever and like old retro video games, but like the stuff that I'm doing doesn't really help me too much where the stuff you're doing is like, you know, things that earn money and things that, uh, you know, are like, you know, learning a language. Right. Like this is the kind of stuff like I'm like, oh, I like that's that's impressive to me. Right. So me beating the first stage of Bart is like, yeah, big fucking deal. No, I look at that I'm yeah. like, I'm like, wow, Mike's really cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm not at all. And we all we and we all know and I know too. <laughs> right. 
uh, and it's fine. I don't care. Um, I like no, I like I being a nerd. I was yeah. impressed. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so the power plant. Yes. Uh, so this is a completely different idea than the rest of the game. So you're going around and you're getting little like. Um, uh, radiate those you know in the the chip uh, that falls the in thing his, in the in the yes. intro the whatever that is the little rod the the glowing so I would say it would be like a control rod but it's the green glowy the thing the green from glowy the thing intro. right that yeah so you're collecting those sure and they're all over the level so it's like a maze though and I have never been able to do it without drawing myself a map okay so it's is it like, random or is it always the same it's always the same at okay. least so um. This probably is a game where that people could speed run because it's always the same. So there's five levels, technically six, I guess, to this power plant. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's the the top one's the pink one, and then it's like gray and purple. I, f- I forget the colors like off the top of my head, but they're all they're all different color. Like I think floor three is green, right? And so you can know what level you're on by what color the stage is. <sighs> On either end, on the right side of the power plant and the left side, there are stairs, and you can go up and down the stairs. In the middle, there's a elevator that runs through the entire power plant, and then in between those, in between the steps and the elevator in the middle, there's another elevator, and then same thing for over here, the right side, there's steps, there's the there's the main elevator, and then there's a the middle like elevator. Okay. That's the layout of the power plant. Meanwhile... There's all these different rooms, but it's a power plant, so the rooms are divided by like these fucking metal doors that come down because it's like supposed to be security and whatnot. Right, sure. So you're walking around, and there's like aliens bouncing around all over the place and shit like that, and you're trying to avoid them. And you'll find Lisa, and she'll come up from behind like a barrel or something, and she's and she says twenty one, and you're like okay. So you remember the number 21 and then you get the one of the rods and then the, the glowy green thing and then you go and then there'll be like a little control panel on the wall and you'll know, oh, I just talked to Lisa and she said 21. So you put 21 into the control panel okay. and it opens the door. Then you can get through the door and you get to the one of the elevators and then you take the elevator – you get in the elevator and it's like, okay, I'm going to go up to the next floor. Let's see what's on that floor. And now you're on the blue floor, let's let, say. So you start walking around that floor, and he's like, "Oh, I see another uh, green rod." And you collect, you collect that, right? Okay. And then, same thing. You basically you keep doing that, you're collecting the rods. You might see Lisa; she'll tell you a number. You got to remember the number, and the number she gives you. Like if you're on the green floor, and you see Lisa on the green floor, the number that she gives you is for the whole green floor. If you ever see any of those things, and every time you play the game, it's always that same number. So the next time you play the game, it's not like randomized. It's not going to be a different number. So do you need to see her before you do it, or can you just? Type so in? years ago, I went through this and I fucking had to draw it out. And I sat there and I made myself a map, and I failed and I couldn't beat the level. But then I went back again. And I had more information, and I'm like, okay. And then I kept correcting it and shit, and I made my own map of the power plant because I couldn't find a fucking map. And I still, I did a stream the other day cause to re-familiarize myself with this. Um, I asked the chat, I'm like, what issue of Nintendo Power has the fucking power plant map? And they were like, it was this issue, it was that issue. I have all the issues. Yeah. I pulled out all the, every issue that the yeah, chat said, it's in this issue, so. it's in that issue. I pulled it out and then I'm looking through it and I I did I found the poster yeah and I found I found an issue that had the the first level the one you know right. the, the the Springfield I found that yeah but the one with the power plant I still have not found that issue I think maybe there's a Game Pro or some oh, other magazine that okay. has it anyway so I had to draw my own map is the point okay and it's not a it's not a hard stage it's just that you have to know what to do and if you have the map it's just like it just it's not it's not really difficult but what what sucks is though if you, let's say you don't have a map what happens is you'll get one of those glowy green things and then you leave and you go to another area and you're like oh here's another glowy green thing and you got to take them you can only carry four at a time okay and once you get four if there's a, another glowy green thing you go to grab it and you can't get it because you can only hold four so at that point you got to go all the way down the basement and then bart drops them off Mm-hmm. Or sometimes Marge will come and she'll take them from you and she'll bring them down to like save time. So you drop them off and then you go get more, you go get more. And you have to get, I think, 16 in total. Mm-hmm. 
So you get you get to the point where you got like 13 of them. And if you didn't mark them all off, now you're like, fuck, and where? It's timed. It's timed. Oh, wow. And you're like, where? Yeah. Are, is the two I missed? So if you don't have a map and you're checking, you're not checking them off, then there's going to be a couple more, and then you're just going to waste time because you don't know where the other ones are. So you pretty much have to make a map unless you're like a fucking genius and you can remember the layout and where the things were. I can't do that, so I have to draw a map. So you get, you finally get them all, and you get to the, you get the, uh, you get fifteen of them. You drop them all off, and then, you, and then you're wandering around. And you're like, where the fuck is the last? One. It's kind of like the bombs in the second stage of TMNT, but on crack. Right? Because you got to know where all the bombs are in the dam. It's way, it's but way it's like more, way yeah, bigger. A little bit. I see what you're saying, but it's, it's way, it's way more complex than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the last the last rod, you're looking all over for it, and you're like, I checked off every single thing. Where the fuck is it? So you have to know. There's another thing you need to know. Okay. The other thing you need to know is as you're going through the level and all the stuff, at some point you're gonna see Maggie, and she's crawling on the ground, and you're like, Why is Maggie crawling on the ground? And you go through and you collect all the rods and whatever. After you get the 15 rods, you have to remember where Maggie was. So let's say when you saw Maggie, she was on the blue stage somewhere. Okay. At the end, you have to know to go back to exactly where she was, wait for a while, she'll come back, and then you touch Maggie, and then she takes her like pacifier, I think it is, and she throws it, and then it goes into the last spot, and that's how the game like ends. Or she had, or she has one of those. She had the last one, so you have to. That's the final thing. And say, like, how the fuck are you gonna know that if you didn't? Is she random? She can appear, I think, anywhere in the in the power plant. But the thing is, is like, sh- since she is the last thing, at some point you're gonna see her while you're getting all the other things. So you have to, but you have to remember where she was. So yeah, I think she can appear on any floor, I believe, but. You you will definitely see her before it ends, but if you didn't remember where she was, if you weren't paying attention, you're then you're like, y- your time's gonna run out. You're done. Yeah. So it's this game could could be called Bart's Nightmare because it it, <laughs> it, it, it is a nightmare. And right. so this is a game that I think has a lot of good ideas in it. Um, kind of like Jekyll and Hyde. It's got a lot of good ideas in it, but overall, it's uh not. Very good execution, and people are going to say, oh, but Mike, have you played the Amiga version or the fucking DOS version or the Sega Master System system version? I know that there's – so there's a um, version of Ghostbusters on Sega Master System, and right. every if you play Ghostbusters on NES, people are going to be like, oh, but the Sega Master System version is better. Yes, the Sega Master System version is better than the NES version. But like two percent, right? So it's like if you take a, ge- a broken game like Ghostbusters, and you're like, "Oh, the Sega Master System version is better." Yeah, like this much better. It's still not worth playing. Yeah, it's, it's like polishing a turd. It's like polishing a turd, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up something. So Ryan messaged me the other day, and this is gonna go into your Infernax thing. Okay. Yeah. I said I said this to you. Yeah. So Ryan messaged me, and we were having a, a conversation about a bunch of stuff. But I, I wrote this down. Because yes. I wanted to say this the right way, so he said it to me, and and you, you can come in and you tell you know right because this is what I wanted here. to talk about too because yeah. I purposely messaged him, I messaged Mike because I was talking shit. Y- yeah, you're talking shit. I'm like, I I'm like, like it. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, hey Mike, and what did I say? Okay, so this is exact. <laughs> this is exactly hey verbatim what you said. So you said, this is Ryan messaging me. He goes, at, he goes, at this point with shovel night. Infernax, Streets of Rage 4, it's going to become pointless to have all the consoles, like the old consoles, like NES yeah. and stuff like that, right? Yeah, that's what I said. So I wrote out my response to that. I'm going okay. re- to read you what I what I read your response. This is my response to that. Okay. About, about being pointless to old con- having yeah. old consoles. So yeah. here's, so I said, I like that idea because if that became a reality... That that basically all the new games that come out are so good 
that we don't like people aren't playing the old games anymore. Yeah, we yeah. Don't need, you don't even need an NES anymore because the the stuff on Steam and Switch is so good, right? Yeah. I said I like that idea because if that became a reality, then I'd be the only one still playing legitimate games, <laughs> and I like having things to myself. Right. Like I'd be the last guy playing like NES games. Good. Yeah. Go ahead. I I hope you all fucking. So, so I, I hope you all play Switch because I'm gonna still fucking go play NES. Mike wants to be like that guy that lives in like an exclusion zone in Indonesia <laughs> and like nobody's allowed near him. Like the military guards <laughs> around where he is because he's the last tribesman. <laughs> but, but I'm I'm not done. So so the games he mentioned, he said he said Shovel Knight, Infernax, and Streets of Rage. Are, are his were his examples of really good new games and whatever. Yeah. So I said, okay, so DuckTales. DuckTales originated the Pogo Jump. Yes. Not Shovel Knight. Sure. And it's a better game. Spectre Knight, it, I think, is the best entry in the Shovel Knight series. But Shovel Knight, the first game, the one with the Pogo Jump, the fact that it exists in no way cancels out DuckTales for the NES. It, yeah, it doesn't cancel. It, it doesn't it out. cancel it out. So you would st- so you would still need the console sure, sure, to play Ducktales. But, but you know, we we live it. We live in a, a time mm-hmm. and place mm-hmm. where people don't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. People don't have a lot of time, and new games come out every day. Uh, sure, sure. So if you're 18 years old today, do you really need to play Ducktales? Do you, really you don't need to, but like it should still exist. I just, uh, dude, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of it. But, like, I'm sitting there. You're sitting here talking to me for 43 minutes and 43 seconds about how much Bart versus Space Mutants is a broken pile of shit. That is, but what about Batman? Sure. Batman's good. But I bet you that somebody's going to look at Batman and they're going to put out a Batman-esque game that just is amazing. But uh, Sure, maybe. But I'm still gonna want to go back and play Batman on a CRT because it's an awesome sure, experience. Sure, sure, you 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 can, but but like, and if other people aren't able to do that, that's a shame. But I think that they should try to also have that experience. I just okay. So I played Infernax. That's my exactly. game. Tell me about Infernax. Yeah, so I gotta tell you about <laughs> Infernax. So Infernax is a game that has been in development for a thousand years. The first time I showed Mike Infernax. It was a flash game. Long time ago. We were in James's house. So when James was doing the Angry Video Game Nerd movie, I took care of his house for about five or six months because he needed somebody to take care of his house. Yeah. That's back when I sh- shot the Elmo and Grouchland video because people were, people said to me, why were you in his house? Because I was, he was shooting the movie and I was taking care of his house. Yeah. You know? So I would come over and that's when we first started like meeting each other. Mm-hmm. Like, was about 2010 2011 something like yeah. that and i brought a laptop it was mm-hmm. an hp laptop and i was like yo i found this game infernax and i showed it to you on the laptop and i was like yo it's like castlevania 2 man it's cool and you're like oh it's cool and then we went and got sushi and never talked about it again yeah i don't really remember it was right? a long time ago yeah right so berserk studios the people who made it a game they made that you may know is Just Shapes and Beats, mm-hmm. which is a uh, shooter style game where the music. I have a question. So, so you. you're saying they had flash games and they had a bunch of flash games. So all their flash games, like where? Newgrounds. It was on Newgrounds. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah. And they had like the big monster that's like one of the first monsters you fu- in this game it was like their logo. Okay. Like the art style that they used for those games is the art style of Infernax. And Infernax, you know, it's been in development forever. It is a homage to Castlevania 2 and a homage to Zelda 2. Two games that I love and you love. Um, I don't... I never really loved Castlevania 2. See, I like Castlevania 1 and 3 and 4. And, like, the Castlevania 2, my whole problem is really like I'm not a huge fan of backtracking. Yeah. But well, I mean I've told the story a million times, but I played Castlevania 2 with my dad, so yeah. you know, it means a lot to me. Yeah. Um I like the atmosphere. Yeah. I love like the mountains in the background in Castlevania 2. Like I love the atmosphere, but the game itself we all know that it has problems. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um 
you know, this game has a lot of Castlevania references. It has you kneel and then there's the tornado and, mm -hmm. and you know, they, they do a cool thing on that. The, in the first dungeon, there's a wall chicken that you can hit and mm -hmm. he like, you know, there's, there's all these references. There are, uh, there's a place where you can put game genie codes in to change the game. Um, this game was backed on Kickstarter and, you know, they have a really nice area called the, you know, Kickstarter mausoleum where you could see all the people who backed and they, they, I, they had them write like epitaphs for themselves, like all the backers. Okay. So you could do that. This is a game where you have progression like Zelda 2. So it's the health, magic, power. Right. You know. I played a little bit of the game and I saw like one part that looked familiar is like when you get a key. Yeah. It's almost like when you get one of the like uh like if you get the candle or something in the in the palace. Yeah. It's like it looked like similar to that. Yeah. So I I streamed this a little bit with Aaron. We just did like the first like part of the game but you got i was watching you play you got like way further yeah i i'm you know almost through the fourth dungeon mm -hmm. so i have like the the charge jump yeah i saw the, there's, there's a thing you did where you jumped up into the air and then you came down you slammed on the ground yeah. i hadn't seen any of that yeah yeah i have like the shield magic just like zelda 2 okay but it's updated i have like the level two of the shield magic that heals you as well. Okay. I, yeah, I was going to ask, what are the Zelda 2 things in the so game? So the progression system, the fact that you, you're not a whip guy, you have a mace. Mm. Um, the spells, it's like shield, heal. Oh, the heal, spells, yeah. All of that. Um, a lot of the enemies, you fight them like iron knuckles. Okay. Like the same way where you have to duck and the sword comes, at, you know. Okay. That kind of thing. Um, you block with the shield. Okay. Yeah, I did notice that. Right. right, right. So, I mean, blocking with the shield is so important. Um, there's all of that. So it's got, like, the aesthetic of Castlevania 2. Yeah. Combined with the, like, gameplay type. From what I played, you know what I fucking, like, loved? Yeah. How violent the enemies are. Oh, yeah. Like, the, like a skeleton will put a hatchet in somebody's, like, head and, and shit like that. And then the cut, like, dude, the, the way the, like, pixel art is on, like, the cutscenes is, like, awesome. Like, when the yeah. dude is dead, uh, you know, and it has a skeleton and he's, like, like bleeding and stuff like that. And just all those cutscenes are, like, really awesomely yeah. um, animated. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they're all over. Every death sequence has, like, a special death animation where it just goes black and red. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. Um, the other thing I like is there's a, a lot of, like, side objectives. And the black and red might also be a Zelda reference because when you die, it's like, like Ganon. Ganon. Like, yeah. 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 Um, I like the uh, how the world changes when you do side quests. Like, oh, I'm going to save the mill or I'm going to save the barn or, oh, I'm going to go over here and do this other thing. Yeah. And here's the other thing. This game has a morality system. Mm -hmm. So early on, the cultists who were doing the bad shit yeah. are like, yeah, why don't you go destroy the book from the, the bishop over in the, the thing? Yeah. Oh, why don't you go destroy the dam? Oh, are you gonna like pledge to the Dark Lord? And I've been playing it like goody two shoes. I'd be like, no, of course I'm not gonna do that. Right. You know, so the game is giving you all these choices and there's multiple endings. So if you play it through again, you can like you be like evil, do something else. Okay, that's right? cool. Which is interesting. Um spells are cool, techniques are cool. It doesn't feel it is a Metroidvania, you could call it that. Um, but it has that old feel. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like they were doing what everybody's doing. This game stands on its own as something unique, and I think that's what makes it special. I think that's what made Shovel Knight special, and you know, a lot of parallels can be drawn between Shovel Knight and this game. Yeah. Because they they establish that nostalgic feel and they hold on to it yeah. while giving you new and and better things. By the way, I was talking about Shovel Knight earlier. I, by the way, I don't dislike Shovel Knight. Yeah. I like Shovel Knight, and I think you know Specter Knight is uh, that's my favorite of those. But you know, I, so I played a little bit of Infernax, and I want to say one thing about the game that a lot of these things are like better than Castlevania Two or like you right. know Zelda Two and stuff like that. It has all these things that are like cooler. Like for example, one thing that's like kind of cooler is like 
we were just talking like that Ganon thing. Like when you ki- when you die or whatever, it's got that you know it flashes and has that cool animation and it's like yeah. really violent and all that. Like I think that's really cool. And the fact that there's like this map system because you can get like really because lo- Castlevania yeah. Two doesn't have like that map, so that's like a big improvement over Castlevania Two. There's all these things that they did to improve the game, and then they have like this Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest references like kneeling down with the tornado and all that but it's just a quick joke yeah so the one thing that they did that I'm not like I don't I think could be changed in Castlevania 2 it turns from day to night and a box pops up and then you have to wait for it to change the day of the night where I feel like in Castlevania 2 it should have been like instantaneous because mm-hmm. it's like nobody wants to wait for that box. So in this game they have a moon that pops up that you also have to as far as I know because you, you played skip it, it. You can't skip it. They should make that skippable or like more instantaneous because if you're trying to make the same type of game as those were back in the day you're trying to like fix all like keep the same idea but like fix the problem. They should have that in a different like make that quicker because like that that's basically the same exact thing as it was as in Castlevania 2 and it's weird to me that they've done so many things to fix the game and make it better that yeah. they kept that so it's not just that there oh. are a couple things that There's are like things. that the other thing is like you know in in Castlevania 2 where it's like oh where the fuck do I go how do I know yeah. oh i need this crystal i got to go to this town what's up with that and then you talk to the people and they're like whatever and they don't give you much so information. The third dungeon in this game, you go. I'm going to tell everybody. Th- this is not a spoiler because I'm saving you time. This is a public service announcement. Okay. Third dungeon in this game. You may not realize, but while you were playing the game, you got the thunder spell. Okay. And it, the one that clears everybody on the screen. Find that thunder spell. Then there is one random NPC in the bottom left corner of the second town that says the following. I saw a castle in the waves on a storm last night. That's what he says. Okay. A castle in the waves during a storm last night. Now, this is a game that has a day-night cycle. It's also a game that I've I played a little bit of it already. I know I know that there's a lot of characters yeah. that you talk to that say a lot of things. Yeah. So you might have to remember a lot of shit. So you go, and when you go to the map in the corner, the little red square appears. So you know you're in the right place, and you stand on the platform, and you're like, oh, maybe it has to be nighttime. Because the guy said nighttime. Okay. So you leave. By then you have the spell that you can make day and night change on your own. So you make it nighttime. You come back. You're like, where the fuck's the castle? Where's it at? Right. So you're like, what do I do? So finally I'm sitting How do you there. even know that that's the right spot anyway? I know there's something there. Okay. So then I go around the whole game. I went around the whole damn game. I went everywhere. And then what did I do? I went on YouTube oh, I and, when you and I do clicked that. and you know what? This motherfucker goes and he walks there and he uses the thunder spell and the castle comes out of the ground. And it's like, dude, you know what you do? You have this whole quest system. And that's a Zelda 2 reference because it's like when you use, I think, spell in one of the towns in Zelda 2, yeah. the castle raises and you go in and get a thing, yeah. key or whatever it is, magic so, container. So you know what you do? You have this great quest system, but the great quest system doesn't show you where the key progression is for the game. It's just unlock the door to the, you know, get, break the orbs. So it's still a little bit more cryptic than it needs, than it should be, you think? Yeah, Mm. I do. And, And I spent like an hour going around everywhere. I'm like, where do I go? Oh, is it time for me to go down there? Where do I go? I don't like when you have to jump out of the game and go over to a website or something like that. Yeah. The only time I'll do that now, if I'm like pl- playing like a ton of a game and I'm really invested in it and then there's like one thing and I'm like, mm-hmm. fuck, I, all right. And I, I, I cannot fucking figure it out. Like, I, cause I hate, I don't, I want the whole game experience to be in the game. Yeah. So like, I, I like, I really dislike having to do that. Um, but then I'll like do it like maybe once, but then, if I have to do it, like, if I'm, like, on the third time that I had to look something up online, I'm, like, I'm done. 
Like, I don't want to look shit up online. By the way, I want to say I love this game. It's amazing. Yeah. There's so many good things about it. The boss fights are fun. I love all the references. I love it. But, like, when that happened, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just like Castlevania 2. Right. We're back to that. Right. right. So And it's like, maybe that's what they were going for. But what we're saying here is, like, it should be yeah. fit. We're trying to fix the problems of the past and move on. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that Berserk Studios, who made this game, feels the same way that you do about a lot of classic games. Because <laughs> they created two modes in this game, right? They have their, their normal mode and their casual mode. Mm -hmm. And their, their, norm, their, their regular mode doesn't say, oh, it's going to be more difficult. You know what it says on it? It says intended difficulty oh i like that intended intended difficulty or you know but then they're like or you could that's good wording you know i like that very th much. that's that's what it says on it and in that you die you're dead you run out of lives you go all the way back to the save point there's no no quarter it's not easy but every time you die every time you die they dangle the Hey, you want to make it a little bit easier? See, I like I like options, yeah, and I like um, like difficulty modes, yeah. Like, I'm totally fine with like a game having you know when they when a game has like easy, medium, hard, very hard, yeah, all that. Like that's great. Like Doom, like has that. And then what do you say when you play it like Doom? You'd be like, oh, what did you beat it on? Oh, I beat it on you know a certain setting. Did you beat it on Nightmare or whatever? Right. It's like, oh, I beat it on Nightmare. You know, like. That's how you identify to somebody how you did it. Like if you're playing Contra 3 Alien Wars, it's like, oh, I beat it on normal. Oh, hey, I came back and I beat it on hard. Yeah. You know, that's how I like it to be. Or a game like this, fine. You have two different modes because there's a lot of people that don't want that level of difficulty and that's fine. And then you can say, oh, I beat the game on normal and that's fine. And be like, oh, I beat the game on on hard. Like that's the way it, it so, should be. So I'm I'm playing I'm playing the game and somebody comes in my office and they're like, Oh, well, there's you know the casual mode. Why don't you put on the casual mode? I'm like, I'm I'm reviewing this game with Mike Mate. I would rather fucking die than play this game on casual mode. Do you hear me? Cause 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 what would he expect? <laughs> I'm playing it at the intended difficulty. No. Um, <laughs> you know? No, that's not where I draw the problem, though. Right. When there's different modes, because the the two modes in this are basically like, um, normal and hard. Yeah. That's essentially what these are. So right. let's say they were just called normal and hard, and you're like, oh, I played through it on normal. I'm fi I'm fine with that. If if you did it on the harder setting, cool, and that's probably more yeah. of an accomplishment. But if you played through this on the casual, like I wouldn't give you a hard time about that. My problem was with the fucking rewind shit and, and all that. Right. It's like, because let's say you're playing Super Mario Brothers and you have the rewind and you're walking and like you hit the Goomba. And you're like, oh, I made a mistake. And then you zoom. Oh, let me zoom it back a second. Now I'm going to. You you can just instantly correct all your mistakes. And that just takes away the challenge. Well, let's talk it. about. It's two different things. Well, let's talk about casual mode and let's talk about what the intended difficulty mode did for me. Yeah. So now I'm in the dungeon. And I'm getting the keys. And I'm like, oh, I got the key. I'm going to run out. Oh, I'm going to save. So I don't have to go back to that wing again. Oh, I'm going to do this. So I'm like strategically like going through all the levels. Being like, oh, do I have enough life? Do I have enough? Oh, I better get that upgrade. Oh, I better do this. You have to have just enough oh, to make it. I better level up. What am I doing? Like, It's like a totally different game. Right. It's a totally different game. And the thing is, is that... You know, despite the fact that I'm making fun of this right now, Infernax is a much more interesting game when you're managing your life, you're managing your potions, you're managing your mana, you're you're trying to get back to save points, you're doing different things. Yeah, it's a bitch when you die, and I was, like, hitting the controller. Right. You, you know, like, dude, I was, like, I'm, I'm like, sitting in my room, I'm sitting in my, my office, like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Well, like what I do. Yeah. You know, right? And I mean, that's I mean, like that's like what it's about though for me because right. if I'm not getting to the point where I'm getting angry cuz I then I'm not getting challenged enough. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm doing this, I'm pissed off, but that's a good thing for me. Yeah. I can't I just can't stop doing that motion. Like I don't know, I just it just happens yeah, when I'm like playing me it. Too, totally. But like I want that sense of difficulty because then when I finally beat a thing, I feel like, "Ah, I did it." 
Yeah. Whereas if I'm playing it on casual and I'm just, I'm like, it's like playing Super Mario World. It's just like, I'm just like asleep playing it. I might as well not even play the I game. Think, I think if I was playing where like, oh, you get to the boss and then you just restart right next to it over and over yeah. and over again. I think that I would have beat it today. Right. And it would have just been like, oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, it's like whatever. Yeah. But if you beat it on the harder thing and you're right. like, you challenge yourself, you have more of a sense of accomplishment. And then when you talk about the game later, you're like, oh, yeah, that game was awesome because you had more of an experience with it. Right. Because you had to do all these things yeah. to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this game is is NES hard. This game is not NES crap, like weird. Like right. it's, it, it plays solid. Um, I did deal with a bug. Um, so when you get to the fourth town that's up in the mountains, the people hide in the crypt at night from the demons. So if you're there at night, like the town's empty and there's enemies in it, um, and you go into the crypt and the innkeeper is there. And if you sleep at the innkeeper to make it daytime, you're just locked in that room and you got to reset the... The, oh really? The game. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. You're just trapped. So it's like it's like bugged. That one situation okay. is kind of bugged. But what I'm guessing It's like a soft lock? Yeah. Yeah. You're just trapped in the room because like the door doesn't trigger. Okay. Well hopefully they'll fix that. Yeah. I mean they'll they'll probably patch that. Yeah. Um other than that, I mean, this is a game that was made by three people, mm -hmm. which is it it's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, they it's interesting how much of the Flash game is in this. Right. Like, very deliberate. Imagine thinking about how your game was going to be laid out for 10 years. That's crazy, the, the, how long the development period was. Right. And like like I said, I only got into like the second level so far. By the time this video comes out, because you guys know we shoot ahead, I don't know, maybe I'll have played it on stream by that point, or I, I don't know, we'll see. But uh, at the point I'm at right now, I, I played some of this through the second level, and uh, I really like the game a, a yeah. lot. I think it's an excellent game. I think you know people should play it. I didn't know about the things because you're further. I didn't know it was gonna be like cryptic like that. So it's, that's good to know to kind of like prepare yeah. me for that because you know that I know that that can get like kind of frustrating. Yeah, the first thing I did when you came to the office is I'm like, yo, this is how you do this do this part yeah because i don't want you walking all over you don't want me to hate the game because there's <laughs> that part <laughs> right yeah. what yeah. they should <laughs> probably do is add in a couple more like signs or like people that like give you a couple more clues i think that if there was like a like a rune there with like the lightning on it or something or you know somebody in our games department said to me they're like uh, they should just when you walk into there like lock you in so, uh -oh. so you have to like mess around in that room. There's a way to fix it, rather than yeah. that. Like, so they could still make it like weird, right? Right. I'm like, man, the storm. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. Well, I guess that means I, like you yeah. wanted to talk to the guy in the town. Maybe you would have, but like, I talked to that guy like five what or six times. What happens is I would talk to the guy in the town, and it would go in one ear and out the other because. I'm trying to play these games, and then I also got my chat going on. Yeah. So my, somebody in my chat is talking about God knows what, you yeah. know, and I'm talking to them about that, and I'm not thinking about what the – the guy says something about a storm. I'm not going to fucking remember right. that. And then I get to the part with a thing, and I'm like, I don't know what to do, like, whatever. And, and then there's somebody in the chat, and they're like, the fucking guy said, you fucking idiot, there's a storm. Obviously, you stand on the platform and what, you know. <laughs> And it's like, I, I was talking to some guy in the chat about Rescue Rangers or some other fucking thing yeah. at the time when the guy is on the screen with the text. <laughs> so that's what happens when you stream. Yeah. You know? You know you know what I like about this game? It's yeah. kind of funny. I've been playing games with voice acting, and I love that it's just like the text is like fast. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I get it. That's cool. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into voice acting that much. I'm not either. Yeah. Because they get a weight through it. And oh, I know. You were playing that, uh, um, what was that game? Uh, the Square Enix thing. Yeah. The triangle Strategy. That. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, dude, the voice actors, like, they're fine. Like, the, yeah. the work they did is fine. But whoever wrote that script needs to get out. Right. They need to, they need to find another job doing something that's not writing scripts because, oh, my God, it just drags on. It's like, Welcome to the kingdom. 
pause. They're not giving the voice <sighs> actors good dialogue to work No, with. it's like, yeah. it's like, you know, I don't want to go back to that episode, but it's like Final Fantasy Tactics, it's like, boom, you're fighting. Boom. This one. You know what I hate? In, I hate it. In like the JRPGs, when they do like the dot, 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 and you gotta wait. And it's like, just go to the fucking next paragraph. Right. I get I get it. It's like a dramatic pause, but it's like, I'm just, I yeah. don't. Yeah, but if I'm not engaged, I don't care how dramatic your pause is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. No. So, Infernax has none of those problems. It's really good. Yeah. You know, you're saying don't play Bart versus the Space Mutants. I'm saying play this game. Yeah. Not only that, the people who made it are really cool dudes, and I see them at all the conventions. So you'll probably see them if you venture outside. I just wanted to talk about Bart versus Space Mutants, and I want to talk yeah. about you know how there are interesting ideas in it. There's a lot of like there's a lot of games that have interesting ideas, and then maybe the game isn't good, but there still is interesting ideas in there, and somebody yeah. could do something cool with those ideas. Like somebody, you know, they're making all like Infernax. People are still making these types of games. Somebody could do something like that game, but make it good. You know, it, it, you know, but yeah, um, yeah. So Infernax is good, and you should play it. Um, I guess that's our episode to talk about games. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We also uh, have a Patreon, which. Um, you should definitely check out because we do a lot of additional content every week on there. Uh, with we talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about we do a lot of Star Trek content on there. We do a lot of other content talking about other video game stuff. We we did one recently that you guys might really like. It was um, we went on eBay and we we looked at the prices of like lots of nes games that was really uh, i think a fun and, and we one decided we whether we would like be into that or we would pass on that lot like it was a lot of fun yeah we did that so we have all kinds of content on there so check that out if you're looking for more talk about games content and thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week at friday 8 p.m eastern standard time see you then guys bye bye I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is kind of weird. <laughs> but there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one out. and done. That's yeah. it. Sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs>